Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and today I am super excited to bring to you um, this metal bike wall decor. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it. If you're new here, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to share me out, tell your friends and family. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. This video is going to be long. I'm going to try to shorten it. But there's a lot of components to this wall decor, but I promise you, it is so worth it. So, let's get into it. I was super, super excited when I found this bicycle wheel wreath from Dollar Tree. I got like four of them, maybe five, but so, so excited. So, this is how we're going to do one of those bikes that is on YouTube. It's not new, but it's new for me. I've never made it. I'm excited that um, look like they're sitting flush against the wall with the basket and the flower, so let's go. So you're gonna start out by taking, I took my pruning shears, my very sharp pruning shears, and I cut this straight in half, because you need half of it to make it look like it is sitting out from the wall. So you end up with this. And then I took one of my Dollar Tree signs, about a 24 inch long sign, and I cut it in half. You can use one of these long paint stir sticks if you'd like. That's, it's, it really will be long enough, but I want the sign because I wanna dry brush it with some um, paint and I wanted something a little more substantial. So that's why we're using this. So the first thing you wanna do is get your Dollar Tree sign, cut it in half, I peeled all of the paper off of it. You don't have to do that. I did it because I really like how it looks underneath. This is the back side of the sign. This is the side where I peeled all the paper off and it just looks weathered and old. And when I paint it, it's just gonna look so much more weathered and old. So that's why I did it. You do whatever you want. I'm measuring this out. I want it to sit about a half an inch from the bottom because you need room for your basket and I will be using one of the Dollar Tree baskets. I'm measuring this out so that I know where to place my little holes. I'm going to hand drill some holes in here and fill them with hot glue and sit this wheel right into those holes. So I'm measuring out that I need a hole right here. I'm going to make a, a divot right here so that that can sit in it, just a straight slant. And I'm gonna make a hole right here. So, once you get that measured out, all I am then going to do is take my small screwdriver, just this one, just not even electric. I do have an electric one, but this wood is very easy to make a hole in. And I'm just gonna twist it by hand. Try not to go all the way through because it will be easy to do that. Just get your holes kind of to where you can feel that it's about to come through, but not totally. So this is what it looks like. You've got your holes, your straight line or your well, ditch, whatever you want to call it, and then you've got your holes here. To get the middle one, I took this whittling tool that I got from the Dollar Tree, came in four different blades, and it lended itself perfectly to digging that well out in the middle. Perfectly. So, we're just gonna hot glue it in, you guys. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And you're just going to hold it till the glue sets up. So now I'm going to take one of my beads and I'm going to cut it in half very carefully to give myself some detail on this wheel. I want to put a bead on either side of the middle of that wheel. So I just put the bead in my hand. I don't let the um, wire cutters touch my hand at all. And I snip it from the top and then it just cracks apart. Be very, very careful because you can hurt yourself really bad 
with that. So just adding some glue. And I'm going to put my bead down. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now that I have my beads on either side, we're going to set this to the side for now because we need to work on the handlebars. The handlebars are going to be made from a wire hanger. That is what I had available that you can use whatever you can form into the shape of a set of handlebars. Be creative. There's a lot of things you can use, but this is what I had on hand. So I cut my hanger apart. I cut the top off and I shaped it in the shape of what I consider to be handlebars. I want to wrap it in some nautical cord from previous, previous experience wrapping things in nautical cord it tends to just roll around this metal so I'm gonna try this to see how it works out if it doesn't work out start over I'm going to apply some cardboard with some hot glue onto the metal first and then see if I can wrap the nautical cord around that and maybe it will hold better it won't spin on the wire even with glue it was still spinning around the wire so let's see how this goes so you guys this is what it looks like after I have hot glued the little thin strips of cardboard to the clothes hanger to the wire hanger I'm not going to do anything with these side pieces because that's where the um, rubber grips that you see on handlebars that's where that will go and what I use for cardboard were these cardboard um, cup holders like if you have a hot cup of coffee I just had these laying around and I needed some thin strips of cardboard so I cut them in half and that's what I used and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up rounding the bottom of it just a little bit just giving it a little curve like handlebars usually are I'm trimming it up wherever it looks like I need to before I start trying to attempt to wrap this nautical cord around this. I've <laughs> not done this. This is the first time, so you guys, we'll see how it goes. It's just crafting. It is just crafting. So I put a dollop of glue down onto the cardboard and I just start it there and I'm just gonna wrap just gonna wrap it actually I want some glue here on this frayed piece so that when I bring this piece around it has something to stick to I'm just gonna keep wrapping it and adding glue where I think I need it I will not add glue at every wrap or at every turn but I just want to get it started and I love that I did decide to use the cardboard because it matches the nautical cord and hopefully if there are any spots that you can see through you really won't see anything so we're just gonna keep wrapping until we get this all wrapped up you guys this is what it's looking like so far and we're just gonna keep wrapping I love the use of the nautical cord with this because it's really going to give it that farmhouse vibe that I am really into right now. So you guys, this is what the handlebars look like all wrapped. Again, we're going to leave the ends alone for now and I'm going to go ahead and get those handles painted. And what I am using for the handles are going to be these pom-poms from Dollar Tree. Aren't these just as cute as can be? And if it was more of a farmhouse kind of look maybe with some jute cord tasseling here instead of this I would keep these but it's not and we're not keeping them so we're just going to clip these loose yes I could do some tassels I might it's a thought that just came to me as I looked at this that it would be cute with tassels on it we'll see how detailed I want to get with this so we're just going to pull these off 
They come off really super easy. There's nothing I can do with this. I guess you could use it for um, filler for a gift bag, something like that. But other than that, I wouldn't have a clue as to what to do with it. And so we're just gonna get these painted. Just gonna put it on my finger, get it painted. I still may add some tassels, I don't know. But we're gonna get this painted black with my homemade black chalk paint. So you guys, I took some more of my nautical cord because I did not like that you could see that piece of cardboard. See how this piece right here, you can still see the cardboard and this piece I've closed it off. And I also ran a little bit of that cord down the wire, just a little bit so that it is flush with the handle that we're gonna be putting on. So all I did was get another piece of nautical cord and start it wrapping. Just add it on. And start it right there. And then I just wrapped it just till I covered up the cardboard a couple times around. And on this part, I did add glue every time I wrapped because I want this to be secure. Then I'm going to take some glue when I get to the last little bit, put it inside, and bring my end up and tuck it in, just like that, and squeeze. And then I'll cut off the excess once this sets up. Just give it a squeeze to close it up so that you don't see that cardboard. And then we're just going to trim off the end. Now it's all sealed up. To put our handles on, all I did was take a piece of pool noodle, cut it down to size, and stuffed it inside of the handle. And when you do that, it fits on here perfectly. Just like that. So we're going to do the other side as well. And then we'll be back and we'll get started on the fender. Here you see me just fitting the pool noodle into the handle. Just stuff it in there as best you can. You want to make sure it goes all the way in there because you want that wire to, to fit. want to be good and tight. And then, after you get it all stuffed in there, your handle fits on very securely. Moving on to the fender. So here I'm taking a thin piece of cardboard, just some cardboard that I had laying around kind of flimsy. We want it that way because we want to be able to um, form it. It needs to be flexible. And I am just rough sketching what I feel like a fender should look like. I am by no means an artist at all, but I'm just kind of feeling my way through here. We're going to try to get a straight line. I feel like the fender is kind of curved at the bottom. You know how a bike fender looks. Nothing too fancy. 
and this is probably too wide, but I can trim it down. So then I want to take my wheel and kind of measure out because we're going to bend this. Let's see. Let's get something to go straight across so that I get a straight bend and not a crooked one. So we're going to measure. Just going to make this a little flexible, a little pliable, and I want to see if that is a good size fender. And I feel like that is a pretty, pretty decent fender. So let's add some, some of this um, princess headband corrugated paper to this to make our fender pop. We're just going to pull this apart. And we're going to straighten it out. Stretch that out. And then we're just going to lay it. Lay it on here. Just like that. And we're going to glue it down. And we're going to glue it past the curve because we want to cut this with our uh, wire cutters because this has wire in it so that we can get the exact same shape of that fender. So we're just going to lay down a couple strips, about three or four should cover it, and then we're going to get it cut out to size. And I'm letting it overhang just a little bit. And it's okay if it tries to pull this up. We're gonna shape it the way we want. Once we get it all glued down, you'll see it'll be very easy to shape it the way we want. So let's lay down a couple more pieces of that um, tiara. I got this from the party section. So it's just some tiara for a, a little girl's birthday party or dress up or make believe. Now I'm taking my wire cutters and I'm cutting off the excess tiara. And there is wire in this tiara. And I'm just trimming up the the fender to make it look more like a fender. And I want to cut this straight across, I think. Be careful because this is not easy to cut through. So watch those fingers. And I'm just shaping the fender. Shaping it the way I want it. If you're not cutting through wire, your scissors will work. But if you're trying to get through that wire, it is really tough. So, just be mindful of that. This is the fender, and we're just going to bend it the opposite direction. And that's why that wire is so handy. Okay, so here's the fender. Move that out of the way. And we can just hot glue the fender right above that tire. And it looks absolutely perfect.
So you guys, I went ahead and I distressed the wood behind the wheel and all the way up with uh, my homemade black chalk paint. And then I, I just dry brushed it. And then I used my gator to sand down any areas that I thought were uh, too stark, like maybe too much paint. So you just sand it down a little bit to soften it up. So I went through and I did that. And I also went ahead and put in six holes at the top because this is how we are going to attach the handlebars. And we're going to do that with zip ties. So I laid my handlebars on top where I thought they looked pretty good. And then I put dots on either side, top and bottom of the handlebar because that is going to tell me where my zip ties will go. So we'll be using three zip ties and you can also secure the back of it with some hot glue if you choose to before um, putting the zip ties on or maybe afterwards you can just kind of squeeze some down in between. Totally up to you. I like to add a little bit of hot glue before my zip ties. So I'm just going to do a line of glue just like that and then I'm going to just place my handlebars where I think they look even and just hold that for a minute and because the handlebars are kind of heavy that is why we want the zip ties as well. So with my zip tie I am making sure that the corrugated end or the hear that noise that end is up because the other side is smooth so you want that end facing up towards you and I'm gonna go in the back of the hole and then just go ahead and bring it around the handlebars and then back through the front of the hole and then I'm just going to go ahead and secure these down. I'm just going to go ahead and connect them to the square in the back and pull them tight. Now that the handlebars are zip tied on, we're going to go ahead and snip the zip ties down. You don't want to make them too, too flush because you don't want them to come loose. And then I'm going to add a dollop of hot glue to each one just to kind of help it not scratch up the wall. You could add um, a piece of felt if you have it, some ribbon, something like that. Anything to pad the back to keep it from scratching up the wall. And you know what, I do think I have some felt that I'm gonna go ahead and put back here. So you guys, basket choices are endless. It is absolutely whatever you want to put on the front of your bicycle. I love this one. This is one of the Dollar Tree rounded kind of oval looking baskets. I love the um, wood basket as well. And then this is one of the Dollar Tree square baskets. And then this is one of the Dollar Tree gray baskets. Totally up to you what basket you'd like to use but I'm gonna go with the black mesh Dollar Tree square basket I think either one of these would be the best choice for me I'm um, sticking with this because the wheel is black and you can paint this too you can paint the baskets paint the wheel gray white whatever you want to do but we're gonna go with this mesh basket and I'm just going to zip tie it on as well Add some pool noodle in the bottom instead of floral foam I'm going to use pool noodle and I'm going to get some flowers in there and because the basket is mesh and you're going to be able to see through it and you don't want to look at the pool noodle I am going to add in this tablecloth or tablecloth table mat placemat I'm going to measure it out and get it cut in so that when you look at the basket from the front you're going to see this and you're not going to see pool noodle so let's get this 
zip tied to the bike. So you're just going to look at it and see where you'd like it to sit. I would like it to sit right underneath the handlebars. I don't want it to rest on the fender. I want it to be right, really just kind of underneath the handlebars. And I will do the same thing. I will put um, not six holes for this one. All I'm going to need are three. One, two, and three. And I will run it through the, um, no, I actually will need six. I'll need two and two, just like the top. So we're going to get six holes drilled in, and we're going to zip tie this basket to the bike. And we're just about done. So you guys, for the basket, I did only end up making three holes because what I did was I ran it through the three holes that I made and then took it back through the holes for the bottom of the handlebars, if that makes sense. So I used the handlebar holes that I already had here to loop the basket. So I made three, ran it through the back, up through the basket, and then back down through the, excuse me, <coughs> back down through the handlebar holes. So now we're just going to go ahead and get them secured, tied off, and get our placemat, floral foam, and flowers inside. And of course, you know, we're going to make a bow. So you guys, this is the finished DIY, and I love it. It is one of the best, if not the best, DIYs I've done on my channel so far. I really think it came out super cute. I love all the detail. The flowers are gorgeous. I chose lavender, a mix from Walmart and the Dollar Tree. I added a bow, but the bow is actually on a dowel, so you can change it out. I love that I can change out the flowers whenever I want. And I just think this is gorgeous. This will be on my wall every single season and I will simply just change out the flowers. It is super, super cute. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And if you do, please give this video a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends and your family. And until I see you guys in my next one, be blessed. Be safe and craft something beautiful today, you guys. Bye.